Like countless others, I tried Huberman's morning routine. And I failed. So where did I go wrong? You're on a diet and a friend offers you a piece of chocolate. It's just a piece of chocolate, you think. Suddenly we're in the, well today's diet is kind of done, might as well eat some crisps kind of logic. This is what happened with me and all those strict routines. After a while it turns out I can't do it all, I get discouraged and eventually I give up. This is exactly what happened when I tried the Huberman's routine. After a few days, my motivation was dropping low, life got in the way. But this time I was smarter. Instead of dropping it altogether, I made it work for me. As a sometimes lazy, unmotivated or slightly depressed, always busy, chaotic person, I found a way to get all the benefits of science-backed approaches, but without losing all the fun, joy and pleasure in life. But wait, let's start from the beginning. <laughs> It's 10.30 p.m. I'm supposed to go to sleep. I honestly don't recall being in a bed this early, but tomorrow I'm starting the Huberman's morning routine at 6.30 a.m. And you probably know, but in case you don't, he's a Stanford-based neuroscientist and the creator of the Huberman Lab, which is currently the world's most well-known health podcast, I think. And his morning routine is supposed to be the best for your sleep, productivity, and a focus according to science. So the plan for tomorrow is wake up at 6.30, go grab a glass of salty water, walk outside to get some sun, 90 minutes of understanding stepped deep work, followed by some caffeine, a workout, I usually do running, followed by deliberate cold exposure, another session of deep work, and finally some food. Good morning. For the past week I've been waking up around 6.30. Not the hardest thing to do. As long as there is sun I can wake up early. But I know it will get a lot harder in winter months when it's dark and cold and I feel like it's not a good time for humans to be awake. Also the tricky thing for me was getting in bed early enough to get enough sleep. Sometimes I just had to work late or I was meeting friends who were working late. So yeah, I feel like I just may need a tiny bit more flexibility to make it work in the long term. First thing we do after waking up is drinking either water with salt or water with electrolytes such as elements or AG1 supplements. But these were like $100 a month and this is a low budget production, so water with salt it is. Salt helps with fluid retention in the body, which helps rehydrate. It also has electrolytes such as sodium, potassium, which are important for muscle function. So overall, it's very good for you. But for me, somehow emotionally it's difficult to drink first thing in the morning something that I don't like the taste of. And also physically, I did not feel like it made me feel better. Maybe overall I'm consuming too much salt in my diet. I know I used to have problems with water retention in the body, so maybe I'm just a bad case for it. The second thing to do is sun exposure. 10 minutes on a sunny day, 20 minutes on a cloudy day. Facing the sun, no sunglasses. No complaints here. If I were to keep one thing from this entire routine forever and ever, which I will, it would be sun exposure. It helps you regulate your circadian rhythm, which is your sleep-wake cycle, which means you wake up more easily in the morning, you fall asleep more easily at night. Also, sun helps you with serotonin production, which improves your mood, prevents depression. So if, like me, you live somewhere that's not sunny all year round, you may need a light therapy lamp in the winter months. But for now we're good. Okay, first session of deep work, 90 minutes of undisturbed work where you leave your phone in another room, which works really well for me. I'm most productive in the mornings. But I would say, I think it makes total sense if you're a scientist or writer, artist, and you're working on your passion projects and you love what you do. But if like me, you had your office job for years and you keep it separate from your identity, I think for us it makes sense that before our nine to five, our precious hours in the morning, we devote to something we also find meaningful and that we love. For me, today I'm reading about storytelling and I'm learning French, so I hope it counts as deep work. The routine on purpose delays caffeine intake for at least 90 minutes after you wake up. To put it very simply, if you allow your body to rely on its natural mechanisms for wakefulness, you decrease the chances of having this energy slump in the afternoon, and also you decrease the chances of having a caffeine dependency. For me, delaying caffeine intake wasn't an issue because normally I just have my matcha around lunchtime, but having coffee on an empty stomach did not feel great. I guess I have a bit of a sensitive stomach and some acidity issues and it just did not feel great. 
I think at this point, one workout a day is something that's quite hard to argue with. I think we all know it would be good for us if we worked at once a day. It's the timing that I don't know if it works for me. Sometimes I just get so sweaty, I need to wash my hair and everything. I feel like I would much prefer to do it first thing in the morning or at the end of the day. Also, the days that I go into the office, there's no gym nearby and sometimes I'm in meetings from 9 till lunch, so I just can't do it. And I didn't on those days, to be honest with you. But yeah, otherwise, I feel like whether you do it in the morning, afternoon or evening, it's just so good to do some sports. I've just taken my cold shower and I'm proud to say that this is the part of the routine that I've been properly trained for. I come from northeastern part of Poland and my parents, they do winter swimming all year round, including the days when they have to smash the frozen lake with an axe. Still, taking the cold shower wasn't easy or pleasurable, but it feels really good afterwards, which is why I know that this is the level of discomfort that I want to be comfortable with. But there's always a bat with me. I'm also worried that if I have to do it every day, I'll start dreading it. So very likely I'll keep it as part of the routine for the days when I'm feeling really good and up for it. We're back for the second session of deep work. And mind you, I woke up at 6.30, I worked, I ran, I took a cold shower, still haven't eaten a thing. And I'm a bit of a hobbit. I eat not one breakfast, but two. So this is hard for me. It's very hard to focus because I keep thinking about food. And even though it's been seven days, it's still not getting easier. So maybe my body needs a bit longer to adjust to this intermittent fasting thing, but I just feel like I don't have it in me. It's so hard. We finally got to lunch and I'm so happy. No complaints here. So as you can see, most things in the routine proved to be, well, problematic. I started off this video as an attempt to do what all other wellness YouTubers were doing, which is just doing the routine. And very quickly, I realized that most things were either hard or impossible for me to do. And I think very importantly, that does not mean that the routine sucks. I do. I'm quite aware of this. And normally at this point, I would just go back to living my life of beautiful chaos and self-indulgence and just accept the bitter days of failure. But this time I actually did a proper deep dive and summarized what worked and what did not. I'm keeping three things that worked really well for me. I'm letting go of the things that were my biggest pain points and the things that I want to do, but maybe not every day, maybe depending on how I'm feeling that day, my energy level, my health, my biggest challenge turned out to be the days that I work from the office because those days I want to be at my desk around nine which means I need to leave in the morning catch the tube and so on so I just can't follow the routine so I took everything that I've just summarized and created my own version of the human men's morning routine but then I had to create yet two different versions of that one for the days that I'm working from home and one for the days that I'm working from the office and I've been following that for about three weeks now and it does feel like some something that I could do in the long term. I think it's this perfect balance between structure and discipline, but also leave space for spontaneity and adjusting to my mood and my energy level every day. So obviously this is what works for me, so it won't necessarily work for you. I'm average, but I'm still quite weird. But I think the entire experience allowed me to come up with three principles that might be helpful if you want to create your own version of it. I wholeheartedly believe in scientific principle and universal laws. I also think there will be exceptions and important behavioral, psychological and physical peculiarities between us all. So you should always test everything and see how it affects you. Genetic variation can cause people to respond differently to different elements of routines, even when those routines are based on very sound scientific evidence. So for example, cold showers could increase blood pressure and heart rate, which could be problematic if you had any heart disorders. Or intermittent fasting could be triggered if you struggled with eating disorders in the past. So just see what works and how it makes you feel emotionally and physically. Also, I think even though we want a consistent routine, it's important to consider changes in seasons and climate and as women in our menstrual cycle. It affects our energy levels, how we should work out and lots of other things. Science is just one of many ways to understand how to live life. While important, it's not the only answer or complete answer. 
at least in my opinion, there are many alternative or complementary approaches, spirituality, philosophy, or holistic approaches that combine them all. Much as your brain may need water or electrolytes in the morning, your spiritual side may have its needs as well, for instance, the need of beauty or reflection. And I think the scientific research on meditation or journaling is so vast at this point that it perfectly shows how complementary these two are, which brings me to my final point. I think it's important to consider both your physical and emotional needs when making decisions on how to live your life, especially on a daily basis. For me, first thing in the morning, I need something to calm down my anxiety and something to put me in a good mood. So I enjoy journaling to order my thoughts and make sense of my emotions. I enjoy herbal tea because it smells and tastes good and I enjoy reading for pleasure. I think to put it simply, I need to consider more aspects than just fueling the machine. And I believe that by including those elements and honoring these needs, I get the best output, also in terms of productivity. When we're happy, we're productive. I feel extremely grateful to Andrew Huberman for making knowledge accessible and for inspiring me to bring a tiny bit more rigor into my life. And I also hope that the way I try to adapt his approach to my life will encourage you to start your own journey to build a routine that makes you both happy and productive. Thank you so much for watching. Okay, can I finally cook? Are you going to eat noodles with me? Yes?